Hello everybody. We are about to haul a machine out of here. But uh, funny thing is we cannot get this trailer back in there and turn it around. So I had to track this thing out about, I don't know, maybe half a mile. But this thing is quick. TL12 is out of fuel right now. And it needs to be topped off so we can actually finish the job. We filled her up yesterday, but man, she sucks the fuel dry. So we got to ditch the trailer. I'm going to show you guys how quick and easy this thing is real quick. Now, normally I would dread doing this. I hate taking one of these bigger goosenecks off there because there's so much hand cranking involved. But did it the right way. Normally helps. Saved you guys the trouble of watching me do that. So just imagine that part going down. One thing kind of neat. Get that thing out of the way. Plenty of clearance. I've scaped, scraped this before because uh, it was just barely dragging and didn't want to hop out. But look how much extra slack Diamond C gives you. In case you're running a regular pickup bed, that thing right over the top. No problem out to the bumper pole, whatever. Plug in and all that. They give you plenty of slack. So, I'm gonna go fill the machine up. Get back over here and haul that thing down to the house. Arthur was, <laughs> you guys already saw the video of him hauling that and a bunch of attachments. He hauled 26,000 pounds behind his Ford. 26,000 of cargo. That right there is a mean setup. About as expensive as you can get for those two calibers right there. Holy crap. All right, I'll show you guys this terrain. We had to track three machines in here. The 080, the 12, and the Mechalek. He's down there grooming up the remaining bit of this job. We've gotten that pile of logs out of it. Look at the size of that compared to my truck. Decent amount of cedar. New landowner, he wanted to clear it out a little bit. Fire danger and then see what he's got option wise. Build a house, most likely. Arthur's gonna come up tomorrow morning. He's supposed to come tonight when I hauled out the Mechalek. He was gonna haul this grapple and the rotabet grapple that's a brush rake that's actually a skid steer mounted one that uh it's got an adapter plate for the mechalek works really well you can just go that way see if I get it first try that BX1 is cone shaped like a funnel so you could be off by a little bit and it still works first try he didn't even help me don't even worry about it he was walking around looking at the birds
later, boom. Well, that was difficult to say the least. Attention to detail. Michaelek, this is my one tip to you guys. Put some tie down positions right here. Ours are hooked right here, but that's not really four corners. So we made it work, tied down the boom, measured it out. We're at 13 plus a little change. We got room to grow, but it's close. It is definitely close. I'm glad I'm not driving down to Global right now with it. Are you? Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Whenever Arthur shows up. Looks like it's got a good bit of tongue weight, but not too much. Yeah, if it goes back farther, it goes down quite a bit. That's all the way back. What about that cylinder still shining? Oh, well, that's that thing there, but we ain't going to gain but a couple you inches. Stick forks up in the air. That's where Arthur had it, so we're under 14, yeah. so we're fine. All right, on to the next one. I'm going to go home. Let me know about tonight if I got to come back with the trailer in the morning. Well, you guys didn't know this machine weighs. I'm on a private road, no seatbelt. It's about 22,500 pounds with that counterweight. That's what they told me. Some long lines of that. Arthur hauled it with the attachments. He was running about 26,000 pounds down his Ford. He said he didn't want to haul it back down the hill. Because it's a pretty steep hill getting up here. So, uh, damn it, maybe I needed to go a little bit farther forward on the tongue weight. It's feeling a little bobbly. So I'm going to haul this down tonight. I'm going to haul it down to my house. Come back up in the morning and load all the implements onto his truck, which is... 4,000 plus pounds worth of stuff. Both of us are tagged at 45,000. And uh, let's turn up them trailer brakes. Oh, yeah, there we go. That may or may not have put him over the limits when he hauled this machine up here. And I definitely don't want to be over the limits going back down. So we're going to spread the weight two trucks he's not gonna bring his trailer but I'm going down a nasty little hill right here nasty hill with a stop sign or some crap at the bottom of it that's all trailer brakes let's get a little truck involved there we go truck, just so you guys can see man it is bobbling me around I'm hating that I need to have to pull over and reposition this thing if it gets worse I will though thought I had enough tongue weight. We'll see. up out of the, I don't know what you call it, canyon. I don't think it, it feels about just like what the 080 weighs, about 20,000 pounds. We are guessing with that counterweight and the forks and stuff on it, probably over 20. I don't know if it's over 22 though. She's heavy, I'll give it that much. EGT, he's all stayed nice and chill coming up that hill, take it nice and easy. No need beating on the truck. Hill we're going down right now is uh, maybe I'll see a percentage sign or something, but it's four miles of downhill grade. I take it in fourth gear and I only have to hit the brakes for corners. Other than that, it remains where I want it. People like to question the brake on these trucks. A 5500, it's always got great brakes. Um, <clears throat> hydraulic disc brakes on the trailer. Big time upgrade, along with the stock exhaust brake and an engine brake on the top for pack brake. I say this so often, I don't know why people always question it, but there's pretty good braking ability here, and I only got the trailer brakes turned up halfway, and it, it's enough to throw me through the windshield. Here we go. Fourth 
gear, exhaust brake, throw the engine brake on top of that. Starting this descent, 42 mile an hour, 2700 RPM. Again, it's not a huge hill. I take it fourth gear going up, I pull it at about 45 mile an hour. I haven't touched the brakes once. I have lost two mile an hour. Now here's one of the corners I have to hit the brakes for. That was all truck that slowed it down right there. I had trailer brakes needed to turn them up just a touch for highway speed or whatever speed you'd call this. It's one point here where I actually got to take the engine brake off like the exhaust brake stays on but I just end up going too slow if that's such a thing going downhill but I mean I hold up traffic I could you know drop a gear type of slow we're down to 37 I'm towing like uh, under 20,000 pounds, like a 15, 16,000 pound payload. I take off my uh, load leash engine brake right there because uh, it's slowing me down quite a bit. That straightaway is kind of mellow. Still, only touch the brakes once. 42 mile an hour currently. I always feel like this hill is like a good tester for seeing what you got. Windshield's kind of dirty, hopefully you guys can see. 2700 RPM. Got back up to what we started after I hit the brakes for that one corner. I was reading in the forum, somebody was concerned that they with their engine brake or exhaust brake on, they were still building boost. And there was a lot of people saying you, you don't build boost with the engine brake on. I got four pounds of boost right now. I'll hit the brakes a little bit right here. Just because my RPMs are getting up there. Got the little corner right here that I would normally hit the brakes for. I hit it a little early just because I've only hit the brakes twice now. fifth gear here be on my happy way yeah 2750 on the rpm so I'll go ahead and touch the brakes one time all right there we go grab fifth gear leave both brakes on and go ahead and mosey on down the hill <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed that I always thought that was cool watching somebody descend down a bigger hill not again it's not a bigger hill i don't want to hear somebody saying oh we got bigger hills than wherever in part of the world you are uh if you got bigger hills than we have around here i'll consider myself lucky that i don't have to drive where you drive every day because that doesn't sound like a lot of fun but we're gonna go get some fuel right now we got to fuel up this machine before we take it back to the dealer uh subaru's tailgating me they're on the speed limit but we're going to the fuel station and there's a subscriber uh, apparently working in my neck of the woods today that wants to meet up and he's at the station right now and he's towing a Diamond C. God dang, behind a Dodge. Good stuff, we'll see you there. Well guys, I definitely should have put that machine just a touch farther forward Okay, right there. <laughs> yeah, 
it is bobbling the crap out of me so tomorrow when I take it to this destination I'm definitely gonna move that thing farther forward before I leave we need to put off-road in this not regular diesel hopefully the thing is on this side I hope Be good be on film. You want to be no, on film? No, I don't want to be on film. Honestly, because I, I talked to you about this YouTube gig and it's been on my brain to do it because I feel like I got, I like your channel. Yeah. Because it's practical for real working dudes. Yeah. And that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought, like, I could do a video on dump trailers because I've owned five different brands. You well, you just want to go down it and kind of tell me about it? Yeah. So we got. This is the first trailer I ordered. So I shopped around and decided to go with Diamond C. So I went with a seven gauge dump body. So instead of like your normal 10 gauge, it's seven gauge, uh, 30 inch sides, which was better for what I got going on as opposed to like a 36, cause the entry point for me is still good. But the volume of the box itself is like nine cubic yards. What's and the length of this thing again? Seven by 14. Oh, okay. Did. 14 ply tires, um, stabilizer jacks in the back. That's probably my favorite part that those came equipped and they're, like I said, tucked away in there. Yeah, and for me, I don't run the high side, so I had them delete the stake, stake pockets that would have been there just for a cleaner look. And then they had a, this little rod piece right here that would normally tie down. I had them delete that off of the side. And then for my door, my door latches, I sent them the design I wanted because I don't want to have to. So I'm, I'm hooked right there. And I don't have to walk around the door. I'm not latched. Relatched. Got the ramps tucked in there nice. Ramps tucked in, 24 inch deck height, which is good for loading the equipment. I'm in and out every day. So, low pro, it's definitely lower than my rig. Yeah. But the, uh, so these, this is what they would have had the old latches with these things? Yeah, the old latch would have been a chain hanging from here and then it would have clipped onto the door. And oh, okay. I just, they didn't. had two of them for that is actually a chain if you wanted to run the spreader gate, which I don't, oh, okay. I don't use that option. I so was just thinking about that because it's, you kick that. And so when you're dumping gravel or dirt or something, you don't have to. Yep. But it's got, I think it's like an eight or a 10 inch I-beam. Ordered it with the spare tire on front. A lot of trailers go with the side, but I don't like that blocking the view in the rear view mm -hmm. here. But the best feature is uh, far and away, the hydraulic lift oh, yeah. at the end of the day. <laughs> Yeah. You got the remote on that one too? Yeah, so it's got a wireless remote. So once we flip the gates, we could jump in the truck and pull out from under the load without having to pull up and raise it up again. Even the powder coat inside the trailer, he hauls all kinds of stuff, anything you can imagine. Still, I mean, I think it's holding up. It's way better than trailers I've seen. So, where I'm a I, fan. Where I, um, put my trencher attachment most of the time in the back on my 10 gauge dump trailer mm -hmm. and hammered the floor out within oh. a week and this one's it's got a little dent but it's holding up pretty good well i think the people that are overwhelmed with my amount of diamond c gooseneck content somebody that's looking for something more practical for everyday use calls a mini x in there or his ditch witch whatever i think this I always like that setup, having a dump trailer, they can haul your equipment, haul the debris off, do everything with the dump trailer. I really like how you got the low pro option though, cause that, that was one thing that photo I showed you with that John Deere in there, it didn't feel stable worth the crap. It felt top heavy and uh, it was essentially the same rig as yours. I think my axles are farther forward, but and where you really start to notice it, it is in the winter time, if you got a 30 inch, 32 inch deck height, 
that angle of the ramps with muddy tracks mm -hmm. it wants to slip and slide on you but with this thing it just it crawls right in that's a good point there too comfy good job diamond c check them out oh brother if i could have a job just talking to people i would be uh i'd be making the money i put in a lot of hours just talking it seems like got home with the machine like i said it is like 13 feet high 13 plus some change 13 six to be honest with you uh, even if I went lower with the boom now looking at it that little amber light is in a terrible spot if you guys can even see it but I'm gonna move this thing forward probably a foot foot and a half to be safe and haul it down to global tomorrow they got a couple other machines I want to try out and in the morning I'm gonna tow that trailer with my 3500 and probably pick up the 12 and bring it back to the yard here and uh, switch into this and take it down to global and drive some more tractors but again double diamond c feature for you guys hope you enjoyed hit them buttons for me guys like comment subscribe this is just kind of a random video so you guys can i don't know the moving of it trailer handled great people have been questioning in the comments what streaks are inside the wheels on the trailer are my wheel seals leaking my hubcap thing leaking no it's uh never sees on the lug nuts and um the studs so nothing problem there uh actually towing the 22,000 something pound machine it might even be more than that zero issues with uh the temperature on the hubs the hubs are actually very cool by the time i got there after doing 55 mile an hour for 15 20 miles no problems so brakes work phenomenal as always thanks for watching guys later